This conference will now be recorded. Yeah. So let's start. Uh, so good morning, everyone. So today's topic uh, will be mainly covering, uh, will be focusing on the architecture. So how to understand an architecture? What are the different types of uh, architecture which we generally see uh, in any application? And then we will try to see different components in the server and the architecture. Like, for example, you would have heard about CDN, load balancers, front end, back end. So, what these are, right? So, we need to understand those because these components ultimately will uh, allow you, or the understanding of these components will allow you to optimize it. So, ultimately, a performance engineer or performance tester is uh, required to optimize these components. Okay, so we need to understand what are these components and how uh, we can identify the issues in this component. So for that, first of all, let's understand the concepts or fundamentals of these components. Okay, so that we will see. Then we will try to understand what's a request response, um, what are the different components in a request, and what are the different components in a response, and how this communication happens. Okay, so those things we will be uh, trying. We will try to cover today. Right. So first is, let's try to understand the concept of uh, architecture. Okay. So if we go back in time, uh, if we see the different types of architectures which were there. So if I say a software architecture, what do we mean by that? Is a collection of components. Okay. So what all components are there in that um, software application? That's the meaning of architecture. So in in architecture. There are different um, layers. Okay, we call it presentation layer. Then we have application layer. Then we have service layer, and also we have data layer. Okay, so let's try to understand what are these layers. Okay. What are the, uh, what do they uh, achieve or like why do we have, why do we need these layers? Okay, what are the activities which these layers perform? Now, if I ask anyone, what is it? Can you guess what the data layer does? Anyone from the name? Can you guess? In data layer, yeah so basically this is storing the data i can say okay storing the data okay now what about the service layer so anything like any uh, any activity responsible to define like we, where we we are implementing some service interface okay so that that this uh, service layer handles service interface okay we call it so service interface nothing but let's say you have some order service or account service so this order service has to communicate with the other components right so that interface is provided by the service layer and what is what do you think by app so what's the main difference between presentation layer and application layer okay so application layer there is one more name to this we call it business layer also sometimes Okay, so business layer is nothing but um, it has all the logics, rules, and policies. Okay, uh, be, uh, which is responsible to like it's more sort of like let's say you have a browser, you have a browser, so you are browsing this, right? So whatever you are seeing in front of you is coming from the presentation layer. Okay, and the thing which is enabling this, or what I can say, uh, how this thing is getting printed in front of you is handled by the application layer so presentation layer is what the your user will see what user observes what user sees and application layer is the logic behind that logic or any process or policies behind that is is your application layer is this four layers uh, uh, clear everyone what are these four layers Uh, hi Vishnu, sorry, I just joined a couple of minutes earlier. Um, 
could you is it okay if you could just uh, just briefly t uh, tell about all the four years again yeah okay so see data Thank layer if i start with, if i start with the whole uh, okay let me explain you as a user process okay so when a user browses a application okay whatever he sees in front of him okay that is delivered by presentation layer okay now this presentation layer there will be some logics behind okay where this image is come has to be placed where what image has to come what products has to come what is his login id username all those logics rules policies is handled by the application layer and now this application layer the uh, what uh, like what happens is service in, uh, the, if there are some services like water services there some account services there different different services are there okay which is handling different activities in the application okay so that services are managed by the service layer and the final is the data right so if if what all data is uh, required uh, by the application layer or the presentation layer is stored by the data layer basically we can say the database is the data layer db okay i hope this clears your queries okay basically these are the four layers in any application okay now let's try to understand this as an architecture point of view where we have different types of architecture like one tier we call it two tier and three tier and and every then we call it entire and all so three tier is a max okay for now so what is now let's try to understand one tier so in one tier what happens generally is you have this uh, computers here okay and you have the file server so basically we call it this is a client this is a client this is a client and this is a, this is a file server okay now this type of architecture is called a one tier architecture now if you see um, uh, if you have something like for example uh, you have some for let's say an mp3 player okay if you remember long back we had something called an mp3 player or even uh, uh, okay just an mp3 player okay so in that case what is happening your client will pick up the song from the file server and play it that's all so what happens is here there is only two tire arc we call it one tire architecture okay there is only one layer to this which is the file server okay the rest of the thing like for example the presentation layer business layer and data layers are, are all in the same tire okay now what about two tire so in two tire architecture what happens is I have a client tier and I have a DB tier. Okay, so in such an architecture, what happens? So I have client computers here, client computers here, client computers here, and I have the DB server here. Okay, so in the, in such a type of architecture, both the presentation and application layers and also uh, and um, it is separated okay in the client tier so application layer and business or uh, the presentation layer is in the client tier and the data layer is in the db tier so, so that here we have two different um, we can say differentiation of the infrastructure we can say in those situations this is called a two tier architecture okay so now what people thought okay why should we keep again application and presentation together so why can't we separate it further okay so that's where the current generation generally most of the applications are called three tier architecture okay so what happens is so there are three tiers to that or three levels i can say one is a client tier Then I have the business logic tire, we call it logic 
tire and db tire so this is basically the most common one nowadays which you see okay so here we have again the computer sitting the client tire then we have the application server we call it the app server then we have the db server okay so this type of architecture is called a three tier architecture so if i if we see all three together so how what's the main difference okay so here we have only one tier and directly we, we get the data from that uh, file server that's it now here what is happening application and business tier we have separated db tier we have separated so in that way it became two tier now here what we did we separated the business uh, the presentation layer business layer and also the uh, db tier so in that that way it became the three tier architecture so what has happened is we have went from separating the layers okay so here it was only one layer for all here it is two layer and it is here it is three layer where everything is separated clear everyone what's the difference between one tier architecture two tier and three tier any questions uh, vishnu just like you have given the example of first first tier oh okay mp3 mm -hmm. yeah okay so for example okay. now uh, 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 let's say this one three tier let's take the example of three tier okay so this three tier is nothing but whatever application nowadays you are seeing right everything is based on such tier uh, three tier only like for example if you take amazon or even if you take uh, any any application like uh, which is happening on the browser side not not like mp3 because it's uh, it's like uh, we, that's why we don't have this type of technology nowadays okay because uh, these things are gone already okay now most of the applications are on three tier because the applications are all in the network and uh, uh, most of the things like what all urls you are entering okay what all you can see all are mostly on three tier architecture so it's basically in first layer you have the presentation layer in second layer you have the application layer and third layer you have the service comma db layer or it's more uh, more uh, better to say application layer and service layer will be in the same tier so basically what they have done is they have they have divided the layers that's all now when i say divided the layers what do i mean anyone so what are they dividing okay so that question might come to your mind right so in figure okay we understand but what is this real division Uh, is it the uh, server division? Exactly. So what they do, right? Uh, if you say say a one tier architecture, so there is let I'm giving this a very simple way to understand. Okay. So there is one CPU or RAM. Okay. And uh, whatever some storage. Okay. Let's say. Now in one tier there is only one CPU. Okay. In two tier what happens? There is there are two CPUs. separately for db layer and the other layers okay now in three tier what happens there are three cpus one for db layer one for application layer and uh, the uh, the service layer and third for the presentation layer so basically what is happening here is here only one resource is handling all the layers okay here two resources are handling the layers separately here three resources are handling all the layers separately that's what happened okay so rather than pushing everything into one layer into one resource they kept on dividing the layers so that they have better uh, control over these getting my point so what are these layers actually okay just imagine that layers as some software programs okay which are running so application layer is a software program you would have heard app servers like apache and all right Heard about it? Apache Tomcat, mm. Nginx, right? So those are application layer softwares. Okay, 
Similarly, presentation layer, you would have seen, uh, you would have, uh, you would have, what you're seeing, like the client side, the Google Chrome and all, right? These are basically working on the presentation layer. DB layer, you would have heard MySQL, Oracle and all, right? So basically this DB layer, application layer, presentation layer, what I am calling out are programs. And these are sitting on separate computers or separate CPUs, I can say. But there's a concept like uh, nowadays, this is also gone because of the Kubernetes. We call it pods and all, which we will discuss later. But for now to understand, you just assume uh, these are like CPUs, separate CPUs. Any, any doubts anyone? Is it clear? It goes with the cloud as well, right? Uh, can you speak a little loudly? I didn't hear you. Uh, same goes with the cloud architecture as well, right? Everything, everything. So in cloud, this is like a general architecture. See, what's the difference between cloud and non-cloud is, see, these CPUs are there, right? The CPUs will be in the cloud if it is cloud. Otherwise, it, it will be on our premise. That's the only difference. But what is running inside the CPU will be same, right? Whether it is cloud or on-premise. Yes, true. I hope you understood. I understood, right? That point. Yes, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Okay. So these are basically. So you can read more on this. Uh, what uh, you will get more clarity of uh, uh, what are these architectures? Uh, why it's called three tier, two tier, one tier, and two, one tier, two tier is are nowadays not there. So no, no need to worry much about those for now. Mainly focus on three tier architecture. Try to understand those uh, concepts well. Okay. Right. So next important topic, what we are going to cover is uh, to understand what's a request and response. Okay. Because when you, uh, when you are testing a per, like anything in performance, we need to understand what's a request response, uh, how the request response happens and all. Okay. So let, for that, I will draw a simple diagram first. Or let, let me take some diagram and explain you from online. So let's say uh, it will, you will find more easy for that. Let me pick up some good one. Yeah, let's talk about this one. So this is how generally an a basic application diagram will look like or we can say an architecture diagram will look like okay uh, but here this is something called a physical architecture now why i am saying it as a physical architecture like why i am giving the name physical to this any guess because uh, the server clients and all these like layers they are basically physical presence right in terms of the right. infrastructures and all yeah so here what we are talking about is the uh, the infrastructure okay infrastructure means the cpus um, the the ram uh, the components in that way we are speaking okay we are not speaking in terms of app server or web server like we are not going that level the, that is software level okay here we are speaking about more sort of the hardware level. So what all hardware is there? So when hardware comes into picture, it's called physical architecture. So this is one physical architecture diagram, which we have, okay, of an application. So this user is nothing but. I have one doubt. Uh, why do you say that it's it's a physical when I cannot see anything related to CPU here? Like uh, it, it's just a diagrammatic representation of users and load balancer. Where can mm, we so see the CPU? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's a good question. So see, the one load balancer will have 20 CPUs. They cannot draw 20 CPUs here, right? Oh, okay. But when, oh, when, they say, when, when they give you a diagram, okay, which is not uh, giving you a separate, like, there's one more architecture called logical architecture. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
two architectures are there physical and logical so in logical architecture generally what they provide you is with the the request response what all servers are there now in this server if i further break down this server part is there right this is where my application layer db layer everything will come okay so when we have okay. physical architecture these things right this load balancer cdn all these are like uh, we should consider it like a hardware with a program running okay it's not that separate things there is a hardware plus a program running on it that's why it's a lb okay similarly cdn okay it's a it's again some hardware with some programs running on it okay which is uh, delivering the uh, i will explain you what cdn is as we progress so let me explain that okay let's not drift away from the topic okay so now this user is there okay user you just consider is a, it as a chrome okay some browser the user is browsing okay your application amazon.com or whatever so multiple users are browsing okay now let's try to understand this there is a road okay and uh, this is a to b let's say it's a uh, mumbai and this is delhi uh, let's say two vehicles okay two vehicles vehicle 1 vehicle 2 start from mumbai to delhi okay and both of them have the same speed let's say okay so both will reach in one hour one hour time they will take to reach delhi okay so uh, let's say one vehicle like both of them require like a 0.5 meter 0.5 meter minimum okay to travel so total it is one meter road now what if the same condition same road i have three vehicles okay vehicle 3 a to b so both the vehicle two vehicles need 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 meters okay to reach uh, delhi now let's assume um, in real case scenario if your traffic is more what will happen in this one hour yeah it will take more time to reach delhi okay so let's say one and a half hour it takes uh, for the three vehicles to reach delhi okay now what if this becomes 10 vehicles time will again it, increase, less, right? it will increase again time will increase again okay now so what's the solution here and hypothetical solution okay hypothetical solution here is now each vehicle requires 0 0.5 meter 0 0.5 meter road so what i can do there are two things i can do one is either i can reduce the number of vehicles which can be uh, which can go through the road for every one hour like what i will do is every one hour i'll leave only two vehicles so that they complete the journey in one hour otherwise what i can do is i can increase the size of the road so if three three vehicles are coming i will make it 1.5 meter if four vehicles are coming i will make two meters if five vehicles are coming so in that way i will add 0 0.5 0 0.5 meter to the road so that is the second solution now when it's when in the case of road okay or highways this cannot be done okay because you cannot increase the road as per the traffic right but in softwares you can do it so in softwares what happens is let's uh, same analogy let's apply it vehicle in terms of vehicle what will be there it will be users okay and uh, the road it will be the network okay and uh, let's say the uh, the points mumbai to bombay right so it will be browser to server okay so now this solution which i said right increasing the size of the road can i apply uh, for my software application What do you think? Can I increase the size of the yeah. road? CPU. As required. Yeah. So what I need to increase? What I need to increase? Band bandwidth. Yeah. So I have to increase yeah. the bandwidth and also the server, right? Because 
see now here in delhi the, the delhi terminology the analogy we have the server okay but server is also like for example if there is one cpu it can handle let's say 10 users now if 100 users are coming with one cpu i cannot do that i need to have multiple cpus so even server also i need to increase so network also i need to increase server also i need to increase getting my point everyone Now, what I, what I will do is, in my case, let's say for one user, okay, there is one in, on the server side, server side, there is one CPU okay, and there is a network also, okay, which is communicating. Now, network is, let's say, 1 MB something, okay, 1 MB per second. What I will do is, I will make it 10 MB per second, okay, uh, 1 MB per second. Now, if it's 100 users. What I will do network, I will make it 100 MB per second for 100 users. So <coughs> can can the same server handle the 100 user also? It cannot. It cannot. Okay. So I will have to increase the server. Okay. In whatever, like for example, if one server is able to handle 10 users. I need to I need to add 10 CPUs for 100 users. So now this, my question to all of you is, uh, take it uh, like this is like an interview question. Okay. So what if now in softwares, how can I handle this? Like for example, should I keep it always 10 CPU or can I do something that whenever the user will increase, I will add the CPU, which is a better solution. Like yeah, the, the, CPU the second one is a better solution adding users uh, you know with the increase of users you can always increase the number of cpus and i think that is Correct. possible in and what, yeah and what is the main reason why we do that and what's because the main reason not, why we do that? we, we are costing not all the all cost the effective users. user friendly yeah exactly okay so we need to worry about the cost because more the cpu you add or more the network you add you have to pay okay so why should I waste the money? Like if you see, see, uh, ten users are using my application only. Maybe du du during some events like some Christmas or some New Year Eve, it becomes a thousand users. But should I? But for this thousand users, which happen in only yearly, maybe three or four times or five times, I keep my CPU to hundred CPU and pay the amount of the thousand users overall year, which is a waste of money, right? So what I need to do whenever it becomes thousand, it should go to hundred CPU, and whenever it comes back to ten user, it should come back to one CPU. So I need to have something like that, and this is handled by something called two things. One is load balancer and something called auto scaling. Okay. So how do they perform? Okay. How how do they help? So now let's say. I have one, user. one question here. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, ask your question. Uh, did you drop? Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Ask. Yes, so load balancer basically balances the load depending upon the like the traffic it flows into the servers and Correct. availability of the servers. Yes. Whereas what you said, like the uh, capacity management depending upon the number of users and all so that is uh, kind of a dynamic sizing of the servers right i will explain you that let me come okay. to that let me okay. finish this okay let me finish this. so it will be clear why i said lay lb and auto scaling okay so see now this is one user okay so how the flow will happen is user will search something okay it will go to the load balancer load balancer will split it okay so now what generally load balancer does what is the activity of the load balancer is from the name itself can you guess to balance the load for each server yes exactly it will balance the load so for now just forget this cdn okay just forget this cdn let's say i don't have cdn in my architecture okay, forget this cdn and directly my load balancer is hitting the server okay so 
let's forget this also and let's say there are three servers okay server one server two server three and when i say server for your purpose for now understanding purpose let's assume cpu one cpu two cpu three okay so now there, there is one user so it will go to the load balancer and load balancer will send it to a cpu which is having resource okay now if it is three users it will divide it equally what it will do it will it will send one to cpu one one to cpu two one to cpu three now if there are again three each cpu will get two two users okay if there are again three each cpu will get three three users so that's what the load balancer will do and again load balancer so this this is one thing okay it will equally divide the load that is one thing equal division one it can also divide unequally also okay the, the, the load balancer works on some algorithm right it has some algorithm which we define okay now if i want to say okay cpu one is a bit little bigger cpu so uh, the ratio should be 50 percent 25 25 so it can divide in that sense that way also okay it can divide the users like 50 percent users will go to cpu one 25 percent will go to cpu two 25 percent will go to cpu three so in that way also load balancer can handle now let's say there is one more handling which load balancer can do okay so now uh, what if i say i i uh, what i what what i command to the load balancer is keep the load on the cpus constant so what i will do is when uh, if uh, the cpu utilization is 50 percent it should be 50 percent 50 percent in all the three cpus so I, what i say to my load balancer is keep the cpu utilization always at 50 percent so divide the load in such a way that it's always 50 percent 50 percent 50 percent utilization okay the percentage utilization so how do you find the percentage utilization if i show you so every cpu will have a utilization see now my cpu if i see it is around 16 percent or 13 percent it is being utilized okay so when it hits 100 percent what will happen when the utilization hits 100 percent any guess anyone no response to any of the applications which you would have opened. yeah because, exactly okay so what will happen is when your cpu utilization hits 100 percent your cpus will get hanged or there, there won't be any logical operations which your cpu can do further so what will happen your user will have to wait until the utilization comes back to normal so that this can be processed so system will slow comes, in it uh, sorry system will slow yeah system will slow down and the user will have to yeah. stop because the threads will not get processed okay the user will have to stop and all the stuff will happen so now in this situation okay when it becomes 100 percent what my load balancer will do no there is something called an auto scaling feature also which load balancer can handle okay so what what my load balancer will do is it will command one algorithm or we can say it's called the auto scaling algorithm or auto scaling program that add more server so what it will do it will add one more cpu and automatically the load will again become normal getting my point what's auto scaling now it will increase the number of cpus as per the load um, so can, uh, i have one question which means that one one cpu is one or two cpus or maybe three cpus are always kept in buffer and auto scaling is only um, done when when there is a maximum you know limit is being reached so until exactly. then, uh, say until you are giving this example, so initially it will just Correct. use the three CPUs, the rest are in buffer. That's what it means? Yes. Mm. Okay. okay. Exactly. What you're saying is correct. So see, there is always a min and max. Okay. So min is basically how much minimum CPUs you need. Max is till what level you can go. Now, why should I define max? Is there a requirement? Okay, let it go to 100 CPU, 1000 CPU. What is the problem? Let it go. Right. So why should I define max? obviously you want to know uh, like it's obviously it's cost oriented right so like we cannot keep on adding and we should be um, knowing what our application can sustain a, a projection Correct. what happens no see generally 
the main reason why we don't keep why do we keep max level is so you know your users uh, are coming okay let's say someday 10 million users are coming to your website due to some reason okay and if my 10 cpu max limit is not able to handle this user it's okay if my application crashes now why it is okay is there is something called a ddos attack also anyone heard of ddos no. so basically no. what happens no if you are a competitor okay like let's say amazon and flipkart are there flipkart what they will do they will flood amazon website with lot of users like um, 10 million users or 20 million users so that their application crashes okay so in that way they, it's called a ddos attack okay denial of service we call it it's some type of one type of cyber attack okay so when that happens if you don't keep this limit the max limit what will happen it will cross that upper ceiling it could be a fake yeah that's what you said right it, it's like a um flooding the other competitor so it it just it making them uh, for example yeah overall in a year you were working with max 10 cpu now during this ddos attack if it went to 1000 cpu let's say are you imagining it's 100 times the cost you have to pay right the loss so that's the problem we and uh, it is a very a big problem if uh, you don't specify the max in your configuration that's why in testing whenever you test you also test whether the whether the configuration is properly configured the minimum and maximum okay and what is the importance of minimum then can i give give minimum as zero obviously not because you are a, a, there in the market so you want your users not to have a, a have a situation of failure correct so there will be some a steady count of users which you are seeing daily right like maybe 100 user or 150 user so for handling those 150 user you know okay a minimum three cpu i need okay so that i will keep always uh, online so that uh, because there is one more reason why the users of load balancer and auto scaling not only that it can scale but it can also uh, see in auto scaling what happens now one is scaling is happening second is now let's say your cpu3 fails Okay, your CPU3 is not working due to some issue or some problem. What auto scaling will do is, or the load balancer will do is, it will remove the CPU3 and add a new CPU. That also it can do. Getting my point, everyone? Yes. Right. So if you if you see the activities which a load balancer performs, if I put now in everything in a point, okay. One is anyone start saying now come on load balancer distribution, yeah, distribution, load. distribution of load now second auto scaling of servers yeah auto scaling program uses lb okay third i will say as in shifting leaders helping in next failover uh, so keeping our service up during failures yeah okay that's more better yeah uh, yeah right during failures okay so basically, so you'd have you'd have heard about this failover testing and all those, right? Disaster testing and also they, generally they will test these things. So whether the service is up, even chaos engineering you'd have heard nowadays, right? It's getting little uh, common. The chaos like Gremlin or chaos mesh, those tools. So they all do this type of testing. Okay, whether your service is up during failures and all. So that's a load balancer. Okay, so if you see, is load balancer a critical component or not? Yes. It is a very critical component for a performance tester, especially okay, because it is very much dependent. Like your application is uh, your application performance is very much dependent on your load balancer. Okay, if your load balancer is not not performing well, your application is a disaster. Okay, so 
that's why as a performance tester you need to always monitor and analyze your load balancer how the load balancer is performing because see this is the ideal case right these are the things which your load balancer will do but in real life in real life or practical situation do you think it will be always ideal like it will act as expected Uh, what I meant to say is, so this is what is expected from the load balancer. Okay, these three important uh, functions. Now, that's an ideal case. Now, in real real scenario, where will there be problems for us to fix in these three? Yes, there would be. Yes, there would be. Okay, because when we say, let's say, example, distribution of load, there could be some situations where your load balancer doesn't distribute the load properly as you expect. Like for example, your algorithm will be defined in one way and it's distributing the load in different way. So you will have to fix it. Okay, so that's where the testing comes into picture. Okay, because whatever configurations you do, it it's not always sure that it that same configurations your application will pick. The reason behind that is the complexity. Okay, because whatever you do configurations, it's not that uh, it's the configuration is affecting only that component. There could be multiple other components in your application which will lead to the issues. Okay, so that's where the testing comes into the picture because though the architects or the developers will uh, properly set up the configuration and all, but due to external factor, external factors, or I will say due to other services or due to other things in the uh, the components when they are integrated, the issues will come into picture. Okay, so that's why load balancers are very important, and we need to understand what load balancers do as a performance tester to test things okay because if you have load balancer issues your performance degradations are sure okay second is latency issues will come up third is uh, response time will shoot okay so overall your application will be a disaster if your load balancer is not working properly so any questions anyone related to load balancer auto scaling uh, yes wish no uh, so the auto -scaling uh, as we progress there is there are two types of auto scaling horizontal and vertical and also there are node auto scaling and pod auto scaling so this we will learn when we go to the kubernetes section okay yeah go ahead go ahead yeah so my question is like uh, you said like ddos uh, attack will be there right so how load yeah. balancer will differentiate between ddos request and original user request so it may block uh, yeah. original so request, are, right? yeah that's a good question so see uh, load balancer function is mainly to balance the load right so what it will do is if you have a ddos attack it will balance the load equally and you, or if you have auto scaling also it will go to the maximum cpu okay and after that it will not increase so your load balancer as such cannot protect you from ddos attack so ddos attack is protected using a layer okay which is called we call it a middleware generally you would have heard middleware or mulesoft mulesoft is a good provider of middleware the software so basically this layer okay what they will do is if it is coming from same ip or same ip address and all and if it's continuously coming from same ip same uh, in those situations it will block the user so basically this is that ddos attack is stopped not by lb lb's how it how it will make sure that ddos attack doesn't cross your cost limits is by max limit your CPUs will not go up beyond the max limit. Okay. So LBs cannot stop a DDoS attack. I hope that's clear. Yeah. Yeah. DDoS attacks are, are generally stopped or we can say protected using something called a middleware. Okay. And that's where we call front end and back end. So when we divide our um, application, right? So if I say, so let's come to that also. Anyways, when we are saying that, so when when I say, let me know if my pace is little high or I, I should slow down and all. Okay, if you are not understanding anything, always I can. I am ready to repeat. Okay, so call it out before we go on to the next topic because uh, then coming back might be a little difficult so better ask now so that we have a continuity okay so see 
now this one right till here we call it front end and all this okay is called back end so just to put it in so this is till here is front end whatever is there from here to here right is called back end okay so front end after front end there will be one more layer called a middleware okay we call it so middleware will protect you from all those unwanted uh, cyber attacks and all generally that's why we have a middleware right so middleware now, is also uh, a kind of server only right with such yeah, a it's, it's also a server algorithm it's also a program running on a cpu Now let's come to something called a CDN. Okay. So now we have seen what's a load balancer. Now let's try to understand what's a CDN. Okay. <clears throat> this is a very important topic. Okay. Again, for performance. Um, now see. There are two ways your performance can improve. Okay, one is by distributing the load properly, which is done by the load balancer by auto scaling. Okay, so now can you uh, think about some creative way? Okay, uh, in which uh, way I can um, I can improve the performance? Like for example, where if I have an application. I can divide that application into two things. Okay, one is repeating things. One is not repeating. So what I mean by repeating and not repeating is this images, the videos, uh, or some files. These are not these are not repeating ones. Okay, sorry, I wrote it here. Okay, let's make this not repeating. Okay, now if I speak about the program the source code okay processing source code processing or uh, like let's say some apis all those are repeating now when i say repeating oh maybe i am i myself got confused sorry so it's not repeating okay yeah so when i say repeating and not repeating this images and videos are repeating. What do I mean by repeating? Any guess? You have so basically in multiple. Yeah. Mm. Basically, multiple these are not changing. changing. Okay, they are not changing. Mm. But here, this uh, this is changing with respect to each time I call the URL. Okay, like for example, if uh, 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 like based on the person who is calling it, like let's say Suman is calling uh, Amazon.com. Based on her login ID and password, the catalog might be different. But based, if Ramya is calling Amazon, based on her login ID, username, whatever is there, the catalog might be different. Okay, so that that is changing. So the so the APIs or the processes are changing. Okay, but but will the images or videos change? It means like for example, uh, both of both Ramya and Suman get TV. Okay, television. Will that of LG? Okay, will the LG LG television image change in the catalog? No. no. No, right? Yeah, so things which are not changing, okay, and things which are changing, these are two things, okay. Now, can I do one thing? So things which are change, not, uh, not changing, okay, like uh, images and videos, what I will do is, I will group them into one group, okay? I will say not changing. Okay, and I will group all the code and all those stuff. Okay, into changing group. So basically, here it will be images, videos, some files. Okay, now here it will be the codes, the database. Okay, and even uh, some processings processing uh, jobs okay all those okay now when i say i i group it okay when i say i divide it 
I literally divide it. Okay, I literally divide means like, let's say I have two CPUs. One is on this one, CPU one, and this one will be on CPU two. Okay. And from these two, what will happen when when my application is accessing this both will be combined and it will be accessed. Now, what is the use in doing this way? And can anyone guess? Because putting all together in one CPU and accessing it is more better, right? If you think it in a little logical way. Okay, it is coming from one, one location, easy to access and all. So why should I separate it? But now I'm saying separating is good. Why is it good? The response because, time decreases because the time taking to search and pull the data reduces. Not only yeah, that, like right. the windows and all, which are huge sometimes on certain applications mm. and the processing of the streaming and all those, it requires a separate, you know, logic to be built and can be housed separately exactly okay that's a very good point okay both both of you said uh, that was exactly the points which i need to which i'm going to say so for example see cpu one okay what are the things in cpu one codes databases processing jobs and all now this cpu one i will divide into ram cpu and disk okay disk is basically the storage okay the hard disk okay now same thing will be here also. In this case also, we have RAM, we have CPU, we have the disk. Okay, so let's give RAM 1, CPU 1, disk 1, RAM 1, CPU 1, sorry, RAM 2, CPU 2, disk 2. Okay, my question to all of you is, this RAM 1, group is there, right? I, I will put it in a, a, a column. Okay. So my question is, this RAM 1 is there, right? CPU 1 and disk 1. Okay. And RAM 2, CPU 2, disk 2. Out of this, let's compare RAM 1 and RAM 2. Now, to uh, for images, videos and files, do you need more RAM or codes and all you need more RAM? The one which would so be access frequently would require the more RAM. Yeah, so we need more RAM for the codes, okay? Because there is more processing and all, okay? So we need more RAM, okay? For images and videos, what we will say is, we don't need that much of a RAM, okay? So lesser. Now, what about CPU? Do I need more CPU for codes and all or uh, images and videos? So then Again, uh, it will be the same because it is more processing. Yeah, it's more CPU and less. What about disk? Should uh, the, here I will say that rather than saying more, I will say fast. Okay, so which requires faster disk? This one or this one? So this will require faster disk, and this will this is okay because the files are small here. Okay. If you compare images, it will be 2 MB and all. And if you compare codes, it will be like 100 KB max. Right? Getting my point why I said this guy need faster in images and videos and slower in code and all. Oh, Vishnu, can you explain uh, one more time how we can decide that codes and all require more RAM CPU? Ah, okay. So see, when you say images and video, okay, first for understanding that, first we need to understand what does the CPU and RAM do, okay? That fundamental we need to understand. Now, CPU and RAMs are basically for processing something, okay? Now, if processing is low, like uh, if you need lesser processing, the CPU RAM can be lesser, okay? Now, images and videos, is there any processing happening? Like, is there any addition, subtraction, or multiplication, which is which is happening? when you are accessing images and videos? No. But in codes it is happening, right? So that's why you need more CPU and RAM for code rather than images and videos. 
but the size of the images and videos are very high like 2 mb 100 mb and all code sizes like code file if you see uh, any source code file it will be 5 kb 10 kb right you are writing the code it can it's not that very huge right so for that purpose you need faster disk now why you need faster disk for accessing images because they are very huge size right so if you disk speed so every disk has a speed also if you have if you have uh, observed this is my hard disk right is it it's an ssd so see it's kb per second it's showing right how much 500 kb per second getting my point what do i mean by the disk speed so how much you can read and write is that part clear everyone what uh, what uh, i uh, what i want to uh, convey regarding faster and lesser speed because even disk has the speed okay so if i if i want to read 100 mb and if i want to read 1000 mb is it same can i do it in one second one second no no right so that's why we need faster disk to achieve this okay to uh, to have more size uh, read write abilities so, and that's why images should have more disk faster disk compared to codes and all because they are small files okay so you don't need that much fast disk okay now my question to all of you is when i keep both of the same both of the same means like when both of them are in the same server which out of this i should use combination less 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 fast or more 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 less which i should use more more and faster so more 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 right every all three should be more if it's on the same server right because it has to handle images also for that disk has to be faster it has to handle codes and database also so cpu ram should be faster so overall everything is more Right. but is do you do you think that's a uh, optimum way because uh, why should i give give disk fast when uh, i don't require that much okay but why should i give cpu ram more when i don't require that much for uh, most of the files right so that's where we divide it what i do is i group i group into resource i group the resources in such a way there is low low ram low ram low cpu and fast disk resources low uh, high ram high cpu and slow disk resources and this type this resources is provided by cdn so cdn is basically they will have slow uh, lesser cpu lesser ram but very fast disk and this one will be on our server whatever aws or whatever server we have right it will be on that the code and all okay so cdn is nothing but it's a content delivery network so it will deliver your contents like the images videos and all so how generally it happens is you have the server on which your code and all is sitting so basically this is this high cpu high ram and a normal disk okay normal disk then there will be something called a cdn okay which will have cpu what it will be for cdn cpu will be low or high uh, low not low low we can say normal word also we can use okay ram low and disk will be very high speed okay very high speed okay so what will happen if my user is making a request okay it, it will pass through cdn it will go through server till the request will come back so what it will do no you assume like this okay my request is coming okay now here image is required here image is required here image is required here image is required and once it passes through the CDN, those will get filled. And it will print in front of the user. So that's how the CDN works. 
Now, what is the use of this is there are multiple uses. One is your images and content, everything will be delivered faster because they have very high speed disk. Now, my question to all of you is why can't, then I need a separate CDN? Why can't I do uh, means like the CDN is provided by different providers. Okay, like Akamai, you would have heard. Have you heard of Akamai? Cloudflare, Akamai, all these are CDN providers, like they're CDN business providers. Okay, they are they provide CDN service to Amazon, uh, to big big clients. Okay. So my question to all of you is can't I do this? Why I need a different person doing this CDN? Uh, infrastructure management can be a separate thing. To say. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so well, because these people know they will focus on this disk speed high. Okay, what they will do is they will maintain their infrastructure in such a way their disk speed is so high. That is one thing. Second thing is they will keep their CDN in multiple places. Okay, so multiple places means uh, if I am in India and if you are in US. Okay, let's say my server is in India. Will the response time be same for US and India or will it be different? It will be different. It will be different. Okay. If US it is five second, India it will be one second. So what my CDN will do, no, they will have server in US also and India also. So if my request is coming uh, from US, okay, what CDN will do is it will deliver from here. And if it is coming from India, it will deliver from here. In that way, what will happen? This time also will reduce. That is also a use of CDN. So if, what they will do is they will keep your images in both US and India both. Getting my point everyone. So if, now if I put the CDN, okay. First oh, is you know how the time will uh, time will decrease if the server is still in India for USA. No, that's where that's where yeah server is basically providing only the code no but images and everything it becomes closer because ultimately see more your size of the request which you're making okay your your user will have to download that much so for example if i go to amazon.in inspect okay now here if i go here network and if i reload it Let it get reloaded, loaded, okay, fully. It's still loading. Let it get loaded. Okay, so now if you see here, these images and all, what is the size of the resource? showing everyone what is the size it is showing in kb 7869 it is showing around 6 mb 6 mb now oh, okay. if i see the request okay the code code you see the size of the code is 223 kb are you seeing the difference right the code size is only 223 kb what is happening and the resource is 6 mb right which which it has now this uh, 6 whatever the 6 mb which you are uh, which you are doing the 6 mb which you are downloading he, the client internet what he is using like 4g or 5g this much mb he is losing getting my point 6 mb of data he is losing right now if he has to download 6 mb okay out of that only 100 kb is a code which is coming from India. Okay. Now consider a situation where this total 6 MB is coming from India, but uh, or it is better to deliver the, the 6 MB from US. I hope you are getting my point, right? Yes. So what I'm doing is most of the data which I'm sending, okay, like out of 7, 10 MB, 1 MB, okay, it is coming from my servers, uh, that's fine. But the 9 MB data, I am sending it from a closer server to that uh, person, that client, US or India, wherever. So that 90% of my data is faster. Getting my point, everyone? Uh, 
Now, if you see here the URL, okay, of this. <clears throat> Actually, they haven't used the word CDN, but if you see it is M dot media, right? M dot media. So that's their CDN URL. But what's the URL we are hitting? Amazon dot in. See? But the image is coming from HTTPS M dot media dash Amazon dot com. So basically that they have set up their CDN with this URL. And if you see the code, see code is coming from amazon.in similarly if you see the uh, some other okay gif image okay there's a gif image see again it is coming from m.media are you able to correlate things now or is there anywhere which where you are not able to connect the dots dots please ask the questions Now, Vishnu, you are telling that uh, code will be delivered uh, to that USSI uh, CDN, right? So, see, Hello. Uh, code will be delivered through our server, okay? Because code, we cannot give it to anyone else, CDN, okay? Because it's a, uh, one, that is, again, one more reason and also the resources, right? The resources are different for CDN and for the, um, the server, okay? So now server, what I'm doing is I am keeping in India only. Okay. But CDN, they are, keep, they are handling it. Okay. So they keep it, you know, most of the zones, India, US, they keep it. Okay. So whenever I, my user is requesting from US, what will happen is it will be delivered from this CDN, which is CDN US. If it is from India, it will be CDN India. So basically what all images are there here, it will be here also. Okay. Two copies will be there. Okay. Now my question to all of you is, can I keep server also in US in multiple places? Yeah. We can. Okay. So that's where cloud comes into picture because cloud makes it easy for that. Uh, so what we do is we keep server also in multiple locations and it keeps on synchronizing both whatever data and whatever is. And my question to all of you is server in multiple locations. Can database be in multiple locations? Yes. We can, but can I mix the data of India and US? Yes. What do you mean by mix the data? Uh, so it's... see, now if, let's say DB is there here also. And DB is there here also. Okay. Now can I put US data here and India data also here in this DB? Yeah, depends yeah. on the distribution distribution architecture, right? DB distribution architecture. Yeah. So won't that be complicated? My question is that because see now my one there is one user who is logging logging in, okay, and his username password is stored here. Now he tries to access this DB, and he will not find that. Okay. So the data is a little critical thing. Okay. That's why even if you see Kubernetes, Kubernetes will never, uh, have you, have you any time thought Kubernetes will never say about managing the storage. So when you are speak, when you are seeing Kubernetes, it is, it is helping us in lot of things, which we will see, uh, when we go to this section, but it will never manage your storage. Storage means your DB. Okay. Now, why this is happening is because the DB is complicated thing, okay? Uh, because there's a data involved there. That's the reason, okay? Data is, uh, the data synchronization and all is very complicated thing. Okay, and it's very hard to handle multiple location, multiple data at the same time. Okay, so backups are easy. Backup is like happening every minute or the time which is there. But synchronizing the data in real time is very difficult. So the DBs are a separate thing, which uh, is very difficult to handle. Okay. But other things, anything you can keep it anywhere, anywhere, uh, in any zones. Okay. As you require. Now my question to all of you is can load balancer be used that for that also to send the load to different zones, zone one, zone two, zone three, like us, India, Australia. Can I use load yeah. balancer for that? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think yes. Yes, yes for yeah. routing. We call it routing. Okay, load okay. balancer can help us in routing also. Right, yeah, I guess uh, we have seen the architecture in very deep. Um, I mean, what is required as a performance engineer or tester? Um, I don't think uh, you need anything more further. Uh, I'm, I know like the, when we go to Kubernetes and all, that time we will see what's Kubernetes and those things. But as an architecture point of view, these are the main things which you will see in any architecture. So first is load balancer. We have already seen CDN is mainly for improving the uh, performance of your application by delivering the contents through different server. Okay, uh, that is CDN. <clears throat> we saw what's a front end, back end, uh, and all those concepts. So my question to all of you is: Will the CDN be? Uh, yeah, let's complete that also. So will the CDN be there? in front of the load balancer or behind the load balancer the cdn behind the load balancer uh, can you think about it because see after the processing everything you get the code back okay then you can add the image right i don't need to add the image from here itself because uh, sometimes it could get uh, it, be, it might be hard for me to handle that so that's why generally most of the time CDN will be uh, after the load balancer. Okay, I meant when you see from here as a user, user is here, he's sending the request. So it will go to CDN, it will go to the load balancer. It will. So when it go, when I say it goes to CDN, means it doesn't go to CDN and do some process. Okay, the when it goes, it will after the code is processed. When it reaches here, then only the CDN will add the image, and you will get the image. Um, but what if CDN has multiple servers and uh, balancing need to be required there? That they will take care, no? That is their headache. Okay. So the CDN itself is again an application, no? Right? Yeah. Okay, I have not got this part. Could you maybe explain again? Uh, yeah, which part? Uh, uh, the, like, uh, where the, position this... of CDN. the position of CDN, where, whether it has to be before or after the load balancer. Yeah. See, 99% of the time CDN will be here. Okay, now why the CDN will be here? CDN will be like the first layer which your user will hit after the middleware. Okay, there's one more something called middleware generally, uh, which will be here. Okay, not here. Okay, so when a user is accessing something, the first thing which the user will hit is the CDN. Then it will go to the, let's say if you have a middleware, you have middleware here, it will hit the middleware and it will go to the LB load balancer okay so now when your server will send this back okay with whatever is required after processing it will come here okay and it will go to the user and now the cdn will deliver the images from here is it clear? showing us the physical architecture diagram the cdn was actually oh. after the load balancer another question is um is cdn only doing it for only the images on the videos or is it also yeah. doing a, a you know comparison for the uh, you know the source code and apis so see this don't confuse with this image okay so if you see this mm -hmm. image there is load balancer here also and here also are you seeing that okay 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 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Don't confuse with this image. Uh, basically, just forget about this load balancer. Okay, just assume assume this is the load balancer you have. Okay, and uh, see, and also see as I said. And what is the second question? I missed that comparison you asked. No, the second one obviously, uh, you know, CDN is not just for for images and videos. Uh, you know. It's also for the source code, so that's why you said that images no, no, would no, be loaded no. afterwards. No, CDN is only for images, video files, and those things which are heavy, like which are size heavy. Okay, but not for processing. Processing is very slow in CDN. You cannot process very heavy code inside CDN. Okay, it's only for mm -hmm. images, videos, and files. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions, anyone? So, Vishnu, can no, I say this know? middleware? Yeah, go ahead. So, can I say this middleware CDN load balancer everything uh, under a business layer? 
um yeah uh, we can we can say like a front end and back end layer we cannot say reason is uh, but yeah you can say that is true because application uh, i meant uh, the presentation layer you can include the um, uh, okay let me clarify let me see the thing is you cannot say directly so this is the image okay so what i can do no i can divide this uh, if you want to divide it in such that way okay this is the presentation layer okay now the cdn actually see uh, this thing you can consider as a different layer as such because it's not a, a component in your server okay so you cannot include it in any any layer for now okay but it to this from here to the end will be before the, the server till this much will be the uh, the application layer okay and then you have the db right so you will have the db which is the db layer okay so cdn you in in the layer concept no actually the cdn cannot be directly added because it's a separate application as such no it is sitting somewhere it is handled by someone else it's not ours at all we are just putting our images and videos there that's all okay okay now it is see now this thing is totally separate but let's say companies like amazon which is very big okay what they will do is this will be handled by one team amazon uh, application team and this will be handled by amazon cdn team that is okay but ultimately these are two different things okay yeah i understood thank you yeah so basically after this session no you should be very good uh, very good at reading the architecture diagrams okay what are what are there if someone says what's the load balancer what's the cdn you should clearly understand okay now if i go to the cdn okay let me show you some example okay cdn akamai akamai is a very uh, very famous uh, cdn provider even uh, companies like uh, um, very big 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 companies like uh, if you call out any any big five also okay they use akamai you see their um, uh, let's say client maybe they would have given some client details anywhere okay maybe they have not given that let's see some they have okay they have not given the client list and all but yeah anyways this is this is a cdn provider okay so basically what they have they have a lot of um, products okay related to compute containers storage databases networking and all security even they have this is the main thing which we spoke so now they have started cloud computing also uh, services but content delivery network is what is mainly the media delivery so for example if i enter media delivery are you seeing where the cdn plays a bigger picture yes why online okay. video streaming and ott platforms require cdn because of the huge size that that needs to be handled due to your exactly. size of video yeah correct correct they are the major uh, uh, cdn requirements okay because they constantly their video is getting washed and the video files are so huge right you know so they they need cdn okay yeah so that's related to cdn load balancer architecture so we have covered a lot of things today related to architecture so after the session try to revise these things go through the video and try to understand and always come back to me with question i am always uh, here to help uh, yeah so if no more questions let's stop here for today and let's continue one, uh, one last question yeah so uh, during this course i meant to say are we going to take one particular applications and uh, trying to cover all the topics focusing on particular end to end applications yes exactly so we have an application called softshop which we will be deploying deploying into our kubernetes cluster okay 
Uh, so sock shop is basically it's a microservice based application so different microservices are there it's on kubernetes plus like uh, basically it's a kubernetes uh, uh, app based application so distributed architecture okay so that we will learn what is that and all using this application we will be testing it so what we'll be doing is we'll be recording it in jmeter we will be testing it uh, we will be analyzing it in grafana and um, using grafana and app dynamics so that we will be doing sure this is our demo application okay, okay. so this okay. will be having different services order payment user catalog cart shipping so these are all microservices we will discuss what is this when we go to kubernetes uh, microservices is a different concept uh, we will try to understand that that time we will understand what are services microservices pods nodes containers all those concepts will come when we go to this sure and we will be using this application for our testing So, which not a conversion version control as well as this? Sorry, Nikesh. Uh, version control as well. Are you covering in this? Uh, no, I am not covering GitHub as such because uh, GitHub. But I will be giving a small overview of how to connect GitHub with Jenkins. Uh, may, uh, but it will not be very deep. Okay. So mainly we yeah. are covering. Uh, we are because we already are covering a lot. So again, adding one more to yeah. long. Yeah. So that's why not adding it. Okay. And when we uh, cover JMeter, will we also be? Uh, I know that you're going to show us like web application. Will we also be looking at uh, web services and APIs? Yeah, yeah, we will be. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, Vishnu, one small request. By any chance, is it possible to uh, prepone this session at seven or seven thirty? Like. I can see a lot of people are moving away at 8.55 because there will be a, a calls at 9 o'clock. Yeah, so actually the reason is I will be stopping by 9 always, but these are demo sessions, right? So little that's why I'm taking a little extra because uh, there are uh, main reason like um, I don't know how many uh, they will be continuing. So I thought, okay, let they get whatever I can in this three, four days. So I'm giving it extra. Otherwise, it's one hour only, okay? The sessions will be one hour. 9 o'clock, we will stop. Okay. Uh, can we move it to seven? Okay. By any chance? Ah, uh, no, that's not possible, Nikesh. Uh, this is the time okay. which we have decided. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so just to that, I have a question. Uh, are these daily classes, like uh, the entire weekday? Yeah, daily, daily one hour okay. classes. Uh, uh, okay. uh And uh, if someday, if everyone is okay, some Saturdays we might take one or two okay. hours. But uh, that's also based on audience. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and what are we targeting the uh, end date for completion of this entire course? So basically, it is a for for I need around forty hours. Uh, so okay. uh, based on the days which we get, if I get some Saturdays mm -hmm. also, we can finish it early. Uh, but okay. if right. uh, yeah Saturdays are not there, then we will go because I don't want to jump because there are a lot of topics also, right? So I don't want to go so fast that people don't understand it clearly yeah so this is an optimum pace which i have found out yeah. from my previous batches vishnu would there be any uh, doubt classes or uh, we have to clear in the session only yeah you clear in the sessions uh, uh, anyways by the end of the sessions i'll be always keeping one doubt uh, like uh, the doubt sessions that i can keep uh, also you can join my other batches also in future okay if you want if you don't get cleared by some uh, you have more queries it's not that with this batch itself you are uh, yours is ending you can join further batches also free of like free yeah. okay uh, and if i have the doubt after the session also suppose if i want to ask in evening then would there be any contact number yeah you can always contact me through whatsapp you can send me the screenshots through chat and all i will clear it your queries okay actually i uh, in the group it's uh, uh, your name is not mentioned there so yeah, yeah i will i will uh, uh, because i guess uh, once the final group is created no so they will put it in the chat so after okay. that okay. okay vishnu thank you they will be creating one more final group uh, which is based on the web. that's when the real like i meant the real group will be created 
so that time everything the materials and all will be shared to you okay okay yeah even the recorded videos Okay, I have one okay, more question, yes. Vishnu. Sorry, yeah, just, just uh, if others want to drop off, it's okay. Uh, I just want to uh, know, is other than this timing, is there any other batch? Because uh, for me, I'm not based in India, so obviously uh, at, there could be days when I'm not able to attend or there might be a situation yeah. due to project. So is there any That's other session? Because at the moment it's suiting me, but I don't know about the project like I'm working on. Yeah. Generally, I don't take uh, any evening sessions as such uh, because... Uh, morning is little comfortable for me and also i have seen the audience is more energetic in the morning than evening and mm -hmm. uh, yeah i understand your problem of zone uh, issues but uh, mm -hmm. what you can do is i was having one student uh, not one many other but yeah i remember her very well last batch uh, she was from canada and she used to sit like around uh, sometimes till late night like 12 1 and all so uh, what i will say is in those situations you can go through the recordings if sometime you cannot join if you are not able to join okay. go through the recordings and always come back with the questions to me okay okay uh, mm -hmm. yeah yeah all right okay thanks yeah thank you for this session thanks for clearing yeah. the doubt as well where can they find the recording sessions the recording sessions you will get in the youtube uh, but uh, demo sessions anyone can access but the real sessions only, uh, only the, uh, they will be giving the YouTube private video access to those email IDs. Okay, so once you join the real group, they will be providing the access to you. Okay. Correct. Got it. Yeah. It's, it, it's in the YouTube. You can access it lifetime. It will be there only. So uh, the videos will be there. Okay, then. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, stop it here then for today. And thanks, let's meet thanks, tomorrow. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so time. much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.